Yeah, this looks good. You know what? Let's make a PS1 game out of it. Breakout, that Atari classic that you have probably seen or played in some form. Someone made a PS1 game out of it. And guess what? It's actually decent. If you have no idea what Breakout is, basically you just control a rectangle that has to make contact with a ball to make it break a wall or any kind of obstacle to be frank. And the PS1 version, developed by Supersonic Software and released in the year 2000, was not only a 3D adaptation of this formula, but it also implemented a lot of cool stuff in it, including a story. Yes, this has a story now, so you know you're in for a ride. It goes like this. This little red dude known as Bouncer is having a beach party with his other rectangle buddies and his girlfriend Daisy. But suddenly, the beach ball they are playing with goes to the ocean, so Bouncer decides to recover it. And in the span of about a couple seconds, a dude named Batnix, who is the main villain apparently, appears out of nowhere, hides Bouncer's bodies in God knows where, kidnaps Daisy and puts Bouncer into prison so that he wouldn't be able to stop him. And in prison, we meet this other dude, Coach Steel, who is gonna give us a quick tutorial on how to properly use the balls to destroy the enemies or obstacles in front of you. But the thing you're gonna end up using pretty much all the time is holding L2 and R2 to incline the rectangle the furthest you can and have the ball go into a more diagonal direction. The more you get the ball close to one of the edges of the rectangle, the faster it'll go. And after finishing the tutorial, we can choose a rank, regardless of how good or bad you might have done there. Of course, being the humble and down-to-earth human being that I am, I'm gonna choose the beginner rank. The more you fail, the more your rank decreases. There's no lives in this game and you never get a game over, so this is pretty much the only punishment you get. So anyway, after this tutorial, the actual game begins and we are off to our adventure to save our bodies and Daisy. This game actually has some pretty cool things when it comes to levels, such as Egypt, where we have to destroy a giant pyramid and then some some puzzles. A castle where we gotta fight our way through to get to a dragon and also a freaking farm. Yeah, no joke, there's a farm world in this game. But it's not just using the breakout formula of throwing a ball at a wall to destroy it. But there's actually some extra mechanics in the game, such as escaping from a wall, firing balls at him, and also pushing evil dogs down a raft. Although, there isn't much of these extra mechanics, because obviously this game is mostly just this. I gotta admit it's pretty cool they added some extra stuff in it. And, of course, this game has some flaws too. I know, shocker! One of these lies within the power-ups. Now the power-ups here is what the name implies. They help our character with an ability that they might use to help beat the level. But there are some questionable things when it comes to these power-ups. First of all, there's this red power-up, which at first sight it may seem like a neat power-up, right? It makes you smaller. Why? I mean, it's not like it lasts long, but was it really necessary to put a power-up that doesn't help you at all? Like, you could at least give a visual indication that this thing would affect your gameplay, because I don't think anyone would have guessed this would shrink you just by looking at it. And second, which is a straight up a dumb thing in my opinion, is the placement of the power-ups, because they usually will spawn right behind you. Which means the only way to get them is to let the ball go past you and pray that you are lucky enough to get the power up. But I will just recommend getting the ones you have in front of you. Power ups aside, the game also lets you play with the bodies you rescue along the way, such as American Dude, Yellow Dude, and Totally Not Creeper from Minecraft Dude. Each of these characters have their own unique characteristics. You could use one that is smaller but moves faster, or one that is bigger but slower, 
I personally feel like American Dude is the most useful one because it makes it easier to not let balls out of your range. Anyway, you progress through the game and get some interesting puzzles, some of which you end up finding yourself stuck for a while because it's pretty much trial and error trying to get them right. Just like this one in the space world, where you have to shoot at tubes until they can be connected properly, and that gets harder increasingly. Or this one where you have to shoot left and right to get some barrels down without falling and exploding. But most of the time you'll end up shooting in the center which makes the barrels go upper. Either way, we fight our way through these puzzles and end up fighting Batniks trying to fire some rockets at him. And after that, the credits roll which can only mean we beat the game, right? Nope, there's more. Because the actual final fight with Batniks is none other than a classic breakout match. This might be the best part about the whole game to be honest. But yeah, once we finish that, Batniks is defeated. We beat Daisy and throw up a big party to celebrate, and that's pretty much it. Breakout for the PS1 is a decent game. Sure, I wouldn't call it amazing by any means, but I will definitely recommend it to people who want to play a short, yet sweet game that takes the original formula and gives it a brand new perspective, which is something that I enjoy seeing in video games. Sure, some of the puzzles can get dumb and you will definitely be fooled by your reflexes a lot, but this is still a pretty neat game to kill some time with. I beat the game in about 2 hours, without even trying to speedrun it, so you could play it too and get through it very quickly. And if you don't get too bored or annoyed by the puzzles and manage to make it to the end, then congratulations, have a cookie.